All right, folks, what we're going to talk about now is classical economic theory. Now, we're going to cover two main economic theories, uh, classical economic theory, and then we're going to cover Keynesian economic theory. And then after that, we're going to look into the different kinds of economic policy that we implement in the United States. Uh, now, what we understand about economics, much of it started with classical economic theory. Classical economic theory became kind of a big thing in the late 1700s, and it was the primary economic theory for how things work all the way up until about the Great Depression. Uh, and then after that point, uh, there were a lot of other theories. People started questioning what we believed about economics. Uh, and you'll see why when we go through some of these concepts in classical economic theory. Now, just because other economic theories have developed since the Great Depression doesn't mean that we have given up completely or we have thrown every part of classical economic theory out the window. There are many proponents of classical economic theory still in the world today, and there is much truth to classical economic theory. We can also uh, say that there's no really real way of saying that what, we're, what I'm about to explain to you, and if you dig deeper into classical economic theory, there's no way of saying that it's absolutely wrong. Um, but all I'm going to do here is give you an introduction to the basic idea of classical economic theory. I am not going to give you an exhaustive understanding. I just want to give you a principles beginning understanding of classical economic theory. And that's going to start with understanding the three, three of the main assumptions that are made by economists in uh, classical economic theory. So the first assumption goes like this. The first assumption and the biggest assumption probably is that the economy is self-regulating. Now, self-regulating means that we don't have to we don't have to take action to make the economy um, healthy. Okay, uh, one of the things that you probably that you just finished learning about was about. Uh, you know, the aggregate market and shifts in aggregate demand and shifts in aggregate supply. Well, there are a lot of people who believe, in fact, probably nowadays, most people probably believe that in order to maintain long run equilibrium, uh, the government has to get involved and fix things when something goes wrong. Well, classical economic theory says that nobody needs to fix anything. The economy is self-regulating. There's a, there's a, um, a phrase called laissez-faire. I'm going to write it up here real quick. The idea of laissez-faire means uh, hands off uh, or let do or let it be. Those who support classical economic theory say that the best thing that you can do to make the economy healthy is not do anything. Uh, so, for example, uh, if we're in a recessionary gap and you know output is lower than natural real GDP, um, then all you have to do is keep doing what you're doing. Go to work if you have a job. Uh, if you don't have a job, keep looking for a job. Uh, and eventually, what will happen is uh, you'll get a job. Uh, those of you who have jobs. You'll just keep going to work, just keep buying the things you need to buy, and eventually, slowly and gradually, output will come back up to natural real GDP. That there's nothing that the government has to do to fix the economy. All right? The economy is self-regulating. It doesn't need fixing. The second assumption, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to show you what the philosophy is, what the, what the theory is on how the economy fixes itself through the aggregate market. I'm going to show you that in, in, in a little bit. The second assumption is that uh, inadequate demand will not destroy the economy. What this means is there were several people 
who criticized classical economic theory in the 1800s and into the 1900s, and they said, yeah, this theory is fine, except what if, what if people don't want to buy the things that are being produced? And classical economic theory says, well, that's not going to happen, and they have a good reason for believing that that's not going to happen, and I'm going to explain that to you as well. Okay? But they're saying that uh, you know, inadequate demand would mean that the, that the aggregate demand curve uh, is going to uh, shift to the left uh, because the, because overall people are just going to not want to buy whatever you know whatever it is that's being produced and then that's going to ruin the economy and classical economic theory says that's not going to happen okay uh, and then the third assumption of classical economic theory is that wage rates are flexible both up and down. Okay, so what this means is this, is that uh, wages, the, the amount of money that people are paid for doing their job, and mainly we're not talking about individuals getting paid for an individual job, we're talking in general throughout the economy that wages, uh, they can go up and they can go down. Now, this is probably the most problematic assumption in the world that we live in today, because today we have minimum wage, we have uh, you know, labor unions, we have long-term labor contracts and things. Under those kinds of conditions, it's hard to say that uh, it's okay for wage rates to go down. Everybody's okay with wage, wage rates going up, but generally speaking, people get very unhappy when wage rates go down. And so this is probably one of the places where classical economic theory is going to have a problem. But we're going to explain that as well. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to have, uh, first, I'm going to explain, uh, I'm going to go backwards here. We're going to learn about the labor market uh, to try to understand this assumption. Then we're going to learn about, uh, we're going to look at the, the credit market to try and understand this idea of inadequate demand. And we're going to talk about some of the older um, economists. And then lastly, we're going to show how classical economic theory believes or has the theory that the economy is self-regulating.